Today is the day where we label Project Indy, the M6. It's time. It's time to do the rod bearings in it. We've been looking forward to this. We just had other crap we had to do on the lift. So that's finally done. You notice here by the thumbnail picture, we got a 650 in the shop. This is the same owner of the X5. We've been on the channel before a while back. This thing has convertible top problems and needs a sensor. So before we buy anything for that, we have a car sitting here. Obviously the M6 is the same as all the convertible pieces are exactly the same. It's the same year. Uh, so we need to take a sensor off the M6 and swap onto this to make sure it's gonna fix it. Then we can order that sensor for him. That's why this car is here. It's also leaking oil profusely from everywhere. Uh, typical N62 though. I don't know if we're gonna fix that. Um, we have several people interested in the M6 already. Uh, the owner of this is also interested in the M6, so we'll see how it all pans out, right? Uh, but without any further ado, let's get the M6 up on the lift. We need to take the intakes off. We need to take, I didn't even show you guys last time. This has the carbon fiber Eventuri intakes on it. And we need to get it up. We need to drop the subframe out and it shouldn't take long. We're gonna see what the bearings are like in this car. Here's where we're at. We didn't film every little step because like how many times can we do this, right? How many times we fill every little step of this? We just took the intakes off. We took the cowling off. We set up our engine bar here. Um, and we took the nut off each side of the engine mount. We took our fan out and our little shroud off the front of here. And that's it. So at this point in time, we're ready to lift it up in the air. And uh, the next step, we're going to start taking the skid plates off. We're going to go ahead and pull off the control arms. And then obviously the hardest part of it all the two power steering lines top of the rack and pinion and the messiest of them all. And I think while we have this rack and pinion out, we're gonna go and pull that seal off the top of it and see if we can't match up a new seal. Cause it's the second one we have was a little bit drippy out of this seal where the steering shaft went in. So without any further ado, let's lift it up and let's get at it. A few things with this. We have the drain plug stripped out. We had to hammer in an Allen key to get it out. I would highly advise not to put that back in. So we'll have to get a new one. The second thing is, this oil, that is not 10W60. That's like maybe 10W40, 10W30, something along that. 1060 is like honey, it's like gooey. This is like regular standard oil. Uh, the third thing is these bolts that hold on this back guard, they have those rib, rib nuts that are into this aluminum piece here, into that bar, and those are stripped out. Awesome. So we're gonna try to do is lower a whole subframe with this shield on it, the light shut off, of course. And then once we do that, we can hopefully get those bolts out when the subframe's on the floor. Here we are. So we had, this is double drain plug oil pan. The front one was not stripped. The one on the oil filter actually was not stripped either, which is rare. We're gonna see how this thing is. See? <laughs> I was gonna, it was sticking up there. I was gonna go over and grab or set this ratchet down and she would have fell off, boys. Okay, so let's dump some of this crap out of here. And we're gonna take a look in this. Jesus. And we're gonna see what exactly is in this oil filter and filter housing. chunks like a little bit of sludge in there very little bit of microscopic shavings but I do not see any copper so far all the shavings are just silver and tiny little bits of them so that looks like a tiny little bit of spring and remember it said the guy was broke and the little tensioner fell out. So what we're gonna see laying in the oil pan probably is gonna be spring. I don't see anything at all else in this filter though. The filter looks totally clean. This is a man filter. There's that little bit of spring. So it should be interesting to see ew, what's going on with this exactly. Everything up in there that's cleaning the threads. All right, well, let's just uh, reinstall the cap so it's not dripping all over us. We're gonna try to get the subframe out. 
All right, so here we are. Um, we kind of quit on yesterday. We're back today. Uh, we just got all the bolts out of the oil pan, all the little bracketry done. You can see the, the cart. Well, I'll show you the cart here, the tool cart. You have to get every tool in your shop out for this one and how we separate these. I know where all the bolts go anymore. It's not a big deal. We have all the subframe stuff here. We have all the oil pan bolts here and all the brackets that go in the oil pan here. And uh, that just kind of basically separates it out, even though it's not really possible to mix it up too easy. So what we're going to do here, we're just going to start letting her down with the old jack. Make sure we're clear of all this crap. Why you guys ask me on these engines, can you do this without a lift? Of course you can. Of course you can. Should you? Well, I don't know. It's a lot of torture. Okay, so let's see once here what, if it holds true what the kid said. Is there something wrong with the tensioner? I don't think so. Tensioner is not broken. Everything looks fine from this angle. I could push up on it. Everything is good. So what was the spring from? Let's go ahead and put it all the way down here. And see what else is in this pan. The pan looks very clean. The engine looks very clean. I don't see anything else at all in here. So was that a piece of spring? What was it? There's nothing in the pickups. Nothing at all. Oh, I see a problem. The Vanos gear, it looks like something's hit the Vanos gear. Like the teeth are smashed on it. Hold on a second here, I'll get out of your way and let you get up in here and look. Let me get the light. You can see here, something's happened. Now, since he said they scoped it, we don't know what's going on here. Now, we do have another Vanos gear, another gear that goes onto the crankshaft, luckily. Uh, but is there a pump problem? What's the problem? If we need a Vanos pump, that's going to be a very expensive operation. No play in those rod bearings at all. Hmm. Sweet. I'll put this back over here. I'll look in the oil pan and see what's in here. I don't see, it's a little bit sludgy. We've been seeing that a little more on these cars. Oh. pump. I bet you. Because I think what that is is teeth. And that looks like a piece of that race. Just like that last car we, was the blue car we did. Vanos pump was all blown out of it. Got some her teeth. Got some of her teeth, right? There's nothing back here at all in that part of the pan. It's all contained to the front. That was a very good thing they did. Uh, so I think that spring is going to be out of the pump. All right, so let me, let's get the Vandals pump off next. How about that? All right. So I'm not sure that even turned. It probably wasn't. Turn. Let me think about this here a minute. Hmm. So you can see here we got teeth stripped off. They're not totally gone. They got a little lip on them yet. And there's only one tooth chattered up on the crankshaft. Um, but what 
supposedly what the deal was. And at this point in time, somebody just taking a guess, didn't actually scope it. This was supposed to be what was wrong. That this guide here broke, this fell out, uh, but none of that was the case. So we have the same problem here as the blue car had. Now, we're gonna have to find some good deals in some vandals pump, boys, because we need two of them at this point. We need one to go put back on the white car and one for this one. Uh, this one is not near as bad as the blue car. The blue car was like totally destroyed. This one has worse teeth, got summer teeth, but the pump itself, the bearings just starting to break in it. Uh, very, very, very lucky that this front partition is on these cars. So all the junk falls down in there and it can't get out. So it can't circulate through the engine. It's so deep and the parts are steel, so they're heavy. The only thing that got out was a little piece of the spring from the inside of this, same as the other car. Um, so what we need to do at this point in time, we need to pull down our, uh, our pickup tubes off our pump. We may just pull the old, probably pull the old pump down. And then we need to go through each rod bearing and check it before we put any of the new bearings or any of the new bolts in. We'll check them all. If everything looks good, we could proceed with putting the new bearings in. What we don't want to do is use our $380 rod bolts and then we get all the way down the last one and the crank's trashed and we already stretched our bolts and we're screwed. So all we did here was remove the oil pump, got that out of the way, and we're gonna go ahead and start pulling rod bearings out, starting with number one. Any dirt in that one? No, sir, there is not. Crank is perfect. It's always good. Let's go ahead and put this one back on. I think so. So right here, let's see. There's that one. Everything looks good. Not a line on it. Now, here's the thing though. If that oil pump would have not been turning, this would be all trashed. And we would have had vandal slow oil pressure lights, engine no oil pressure lights, and that'd been it. Uh, but we don't have none of that. So this thing was kinda, I'm gonna say this thing was barely caught in time. Barely, barely, barely. We're going to cylinder number three and four. Good. It's got a little speck in it. What is that? Look at that. A little spot in there. Oh, that's where the, the journal was. Huh. I mean, it's totally fine. There's no problem. Perfect. Absolute perfection. That was a little bit, it's not any scratch, it's scuffed. There's no lines or anything in it. Frank's perfect on that. We're not gonna take out the tops. At this point in time, if the bottom's good and the crank looks good, we're golden. And at 65,000 miles, we shouldn't be having a lot of wear on these. And so far, there's not a lot of wear on them. A very normal amount. It's got one little speck in there. See that right in the middle? But it's not bad. By any stretch. Journal is absolutely perfect. Oh my gosh, if I rip my glove off. Here's the next one. Actually, it looks really, really good. The journal looks good, no problem at all. Looks good. I think that's probably from setting. You can see the little round hole on there where the hole was. This car did set for a long time. Oh my God. This set for a long time. You kind of get some of that when that happens. But is anything wrong? Hell no, it's not. After looking at those teeth closer, only like half, it just slipped. Only like half the tooth is gone. It's still like half the tooth on there. And usually what happens, um, once that bearing starts to go out, it starts chattering, and you'll break a tooth, 
and we get lodged in there and break other teeth off. So man, this thing, any more driving with this baby, then it's a bad news. This car was not in half power or anything. But that's why whenever we got it, it never really made any noise. And the guy was like, oh, it's making such a bad noise. Well, I think since we got it, there's no chunks in there getting ground up at that point. Whenever he had it, it was probably the case. Ow. Looks really good. Really, really good. No issues at all. That was number eight. About drift on my shirt. Perfect. No problems at all. Perfect. Oh. So that's it, guys. I mean, it sucks for the vandals pump, but this could have easily been so much worse. Could easily need an engine or a crank. It goes to show you, so many people commenting, oh, mine's got 120, 150,000 miles on it. I've never had a problem. You don't get any forewarning. It's you're just driving along one day, it just comes apart, and that's it. These engines are eight, 10 grand for a used one. Then you have to get it paid to have this one taken out, the new one put in. You gotta do raw bearings on the new one. You're gonna be 12, 13, 14 grand to swap this engine. It's worth it no matter what your mileage is. Even 65,000 miles like this one, just do it. You're, if you don't need a Vandals pump, you're in this about 700 bucks. That's it. Why did the Vandals pump fail? Sometimes it just fell. Um, we just don't know. It could have had a piece of something went through the gear and broke the tooth and it started destroying it. Probably the bearing went out in it. Uh, I don't know. This does not have the right oil in it. Maybe it has something to do with it. I don't know. I only own this car for what? A month. So before that, we don't know anything about it. That's going to be it, guys. Thanks for watching today's video. Stay tuned for the update on this car coming up. See you later.